Welcome back YouTube to Icy Chap's Edge. I'm Icy Chap and today I want to introduce a series of videos on rope and knots. Uh, basically I feel that rope is the second most important tool you can bring with you into the wilderness. Second only to a knife or an edge tool. I just want to show you this knife really quick. This is a very nice bushcraft knife made by a YouTuber who sent it to me so I could review it. And I haven't had a chance to use the knife yet so I haven't done the review. But I wanted to show it so he knows that I received it and I haven't forgotten about him. I will get to it, just not in this next series of videos. So why knots? Well, basically without knots rope is useless. Knots and what they do to the rope are really what make rope a useful tool. In this series of videos I'm going to cover basically the four types of knots that I feel are important for wilderness survival situations or just basic camping. And those are stoppers, bends, loops, and hitches. Now, this is by no means a comprehensive list. And if you want to learn more about knots, there are lots of YouTube videos out there. Or you can get yourself a book. Uh, you can get a very reasonable modern book for about 10 to 15 bucks. Or if you really want to have the definitive treatise on knots, you can go out and get the Ashley Book of Knots, which was published in the 40s and still remains the most comprehensive knot book out there. But I don't really think it's necessary. All you really need to know are a few of the basic types, uh, how to tie them from memory, and I think you'll be fine in any wilderness situation where you need some cord. Uh, in my videos I'm going to talk about obviously those basic types of knots, some basic rope terminology, uh, some of the ways in which knots can fail, and how to store your rope properly. Uh, so please stay tuned. I'm going to try to keep these videos short and sweet uh, for a couple reasons. Number one, I do respect your time. I realize that you can't necessarily sit for 10 to 20 minutes and watch a whole long video on knots. Number two, I think it'll make it a much more useful reference if you can just go to the individual video and find the knot that you need as opposed to having to scroll through one really long video. And three, frankly, the practical issue is I just don't think all this information is going to fit in one video. So uh, let's get to it. Here are the basic terms that you should know when dealing with rope and knots. First we have a bite, that's spelled B-I-G-H-T, and a bite is basically an open loop. So right here we have a bite. Second is a loop, and a loop is basically a closed curve or arc in your rope, and that's what a loop looks like. Then we have the working end and the standing end. And the working end is basically the end of rope that is actually working or being manipulated to create the knot. The standing end is the length of rope which is not moving. So in the case of this overhand knot, this is the standing end because it's not moving. This is the working end because it is working and moving. And I tie my overhand knot around the standing part or standing end. So those are the basic terminology that we are going to use over the course of these videos. What does it mean to dress and set your knot correctly? Well, simply put, to dress a knot means to make sure that the knot is aligned properly. So in the case of this square knot, what can sometimes happen is, let's say, this end somehow becomes reversed and winds up crossed under this end. Well, if that happens, then the knot actually changes its shape to the point where it's no longer as secure or as useful. So what I want to do is to dress the knot, is to literally make sure that there are no inadvertent crosses in the knot that are going to make it less secure. Then, to set the knot, what that really means is to tighten it. And to properly set your knot means to tighten all the parts of the knot together so that it is as secure as it can be and will not move or shift. That's what it means to dress and set a knot. There are really two ways that a knot can fail. And the first is slipping. And I'll use a half hitch to demonstrate. Slipping is when the working end of the knot goes back through the knot and basically reverses the process of tying it. As I put pressure on this half hitch, because it's not a secure knot, 
the working end comes right back through and unties the knot. The other way a knot can fail is by capsizing. And capsizing, and I'll demonstrate with a square knot, is basically when the knot changes its shape, thereby becoming an entirely different knot, usually less secure than the one you tied. So in the case of this square knot, while it's not a great bend, it does hold the ends together. But if for some reason, either through movement on the lines or by jarring, the square knot capsizes, then all of a sudden it becomes an entirely different knot, and one in this case which is not secure at all. Knots work based on the concepts of friction and pressure. When the rope is pressed against itself, its fibers exert friction, and that prevents the rope from moving. If the rope can't move, the knot stays secure. In the case of knots that seize, the friction in the knot is so great that it actually overcomes the tensile strength of the rope. That means you can no longer untie the knot simply by pulling on the rope. In that case, you will actually have to cut the rope to remove the seized knot. Or you can sometimes use specialized tools like a spike to be able to remove the knot. In some cases, a seized knot is very useful because it's so secure. But most of the time in wilderness survival, we don't want a seized knot because we need to preserve our rope. I'll be showing you one seizing knot, but I only recommend you use it in very dire situations where you need a knot that's completely secure. When storing your rope, you want to make sure you keep it stress-free and dry. Now in the case of this rope, it happens to be braided nylon, so it's synthetic. So moisture is not really going to hurt it. It's not going to rot the rope. But if I had a natural fiber rope, like hemp or jute, it's very important to store the rope in a manner that's going to be dry and stress-free. Moisture will definitely rot and eventually destroy a natural fiber rope. Any rope should be stored stress-free, however, because if you develop kinks, and you store the rope that way, then eventually that kink is going to put stress on the fibers and the rope can eventually fail. If that happens, you're going to be in real trouble. The last thing you want is a rope that fails on you when your life depends on it. So that's my introduction to my series of videos on rope and wilderness knots. Stay tuned to the next video when I show you a useful way to coil and store your rope. Uh, leave comments, subscribe, and have a good one.